this is why a lot of people, this is why there's a need for housekeepers, particularly. Um, and here's the underlying problem. And I always say this, but I think it bears repeating because some of you are new. Welcome to the channel. There are two sets of victims. There is the set of victims that have to flee their countries because of U.S. imperialism, colonialism, from the destabilization of their countries in places like Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Venezuela. The destabilization that happens and the war on drugs is also part of it forces them to flee their countries, their homes, the places where they grew up, to come to a country where over half the people don't want them here. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. <laughs> a lot of times when you think about housekeepers, you typically have this particular image in your brain. Housekeepers typically are uh, women, first of all, uh, and then they are of a particular ethnicity and race. Um, but they seem to be winning in Florida. And it's a really interesting story that I want to get into. So let me share my screen because when I saw this, I said, no way. The salaries are going up. Wait, up, up in the way. Service jobs in wealthy Palm Beach, Florida is reaching new extremes. It has even led to bidding wars for housekeepers and exploding salaries. Robert Frank joins us now with more on the Wait, bidding wars? Bidding wars for housekeepers? Hold the phone, chicken bone. What in the world is going on here? Let's continue. Let's listen. This story, it's, it's expensive to be rich, Robert, I it, think. Is it one is of the more than ever. Uh, <laughs> thousands of wealthy New Yorkers moved to Florida after the pandemic. They bought big homes in Palm Beach, Miami. They need cleaning. The problem is there weren't enough experienced cleaners. So now Florida's wealth boom has touched off a housekeeper shortage. Salaries for experienced housekeepers in Palm Beach more than doubled since 2020. <laughs> the typical salary, get this, is now $110,000 to $150,000, including overtime, 401ks, and health insurance. Most housekeepers are asking $50 an hour or more. Staffing agencies say some executive housekeepers, that's where they clean and they help manage a cleaning staff, are topping $200,000 and bidding wars have become common. I may need to grab a, 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 a microfiber cloth and, and, and some Windex, bro. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Where, where, where's my can of scrub, scrubbing balls at? <laughs> you don't mean to tell us, look at this. Lo, you look at this. 110 to 150,000 a year includes overtime, 401k, healthcare benefits, and an average hourly weight of $50 an hour just to clean somebody's house? I wish, I wish, I wish. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why? We're going to get into that in a second. But rich people are literally having to shell out more money because there's not enough people to keep their houses clean. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, my gosh. Let's continue. 
I've never seen anything like it. Me neither. Um, I mean, to go from twenty, twenty-five dollars an hour to such a hike in such short a short period of time, it's. I I really it's it's really surprising to us. Right. She said. She said. I should what? She slipped. She slipped something to us. Right. Now hotel. You said I I should. It shouldn't. You what do you mean it shouldn't? What are you talking about, ma'am? We talking about April. You saw. You heard that, right? You heard that too, didn't you? I I really it's sh it's really surprising. See, it shouldn't. Come on, April. See, this is how capitalism works, right? And aren't you guys supposed to be free market fundamentalists who want to get people who compete for the best? Isn't it supposed to be supply and demand? Well, the supply is lower, which means the demand goes up, which means you got to pay top dollar for it. I mean, that's what baby my sweet summer child see i'm gonna talk about real quick in a second about why the supply is so low which increases the demand you free market fundamentalists you guys should have seen this coming but you didn't and so now the rich people have to pay through the nose just to keep your houses clean well <laughs> Oh, baby, let's get into it. To us. Right. Now, hotels and resorts also have a shortage, but that's a different labor pool since housekeepers for the wealthy need very specific skills. There's also higher demand for chefs, nannies, and butlers. Those are called hospitality managers now, but need for those staff not nearly as high as for housekeepers. By the way, you can read more about the housekeeper shortage and where the wealthy are investing and the new Inside Wealth newsletter just went live right now. You can head to cnbc.com slash So those salary levels, I mean, so this is a full-time person that you're employing yeah. for the most part? Absolutely. And, and it's this perfect storm where you have, you know, the big problem with inflation now is wage inflation in the service sector. So that's the sort of apex of that. Then you had this huge wealth migration to Florida, which sort of in some communities doubled the need for housekeepers. And then you have a wealthy consumer base that will pay whatever it takes yeah. to get the staff. And so those three things coming together, I mean, this really is the ultimate sign of wage inflation in the service sector. We're seeing it in California restaurants and we're seeing it in cleaning staff throughout the country, but sure. no more than, than like what you've seen. In hotel, the houses that we're looking at, this is not like a normal person's issues. These are, these are 30,000 square feet houses that often have three or four housekeepers. And the demand now is for the executive housekeeper or head housekeeper that not only cleans, but also manages the staff. And, and there's now going to be a training school in Palm Beach because they can't find qualified candidates. So now people are making money from training the housekeepers because there's so much demand. Why isn't there more housekeepers? Well, the people who typically do a lot of housekeeping, especially within the state of Florida, are a particular set of people that do not have or lack citizenship within this country. So therefore, a lot of them are demonized and held back. So therefore, the pool of housekeepers is very low. So, might I remind you of the law that Ron DeSantis signed not too long ago? Remember, I talked about this, and this was a big thing. Florida, immig Ooh. Florida immigrants detail their exit following the Santa's immigration law. I had to leave, the blurb says an undocumented immigrant who built a business and a life in Tampa is one of many who have left. They don't want us here. Let's go into it, says when David Guerrero and his large family left fled Florida in May, they left behind beds, mattresses, furniture, and construction tools they used to make a living but it's where he thinks 
of his children's toys that his voice breaks. He said, this is what hurt me the most, my girls who no longer have toys. He's from El Salvador, who until a few weeks ago had a home, a yard, and a business with his family in Florida. So Ron DeSantis signed SB 1718, the immigration law that goes into effect July 1st. The law imposes strict restrictions and penalties to deter the employment of undocumented workers in the state. Says of the 10 people who lived in the Guerrero house, only three were children, the U.S. citizens. The others did not have legal immigration status. They left Tampa on May 30th. From there, the sh for the same street where a month earlier, Guerrero had seen the belongings left behind by other immigrants and joke in a popular TikTok video that he would be next. So, um, so it's more people that talk about how uh, they, because of that immigration law, that they were essentially threatened with deportation and jail time if they were working in the state because of what Ron DeSantis did. So of course they're not gonna they're gonna flee the state. It says some 2.7 million immigrants made up 26 percent of Florida's labor force in 2018. More than 300,000 worked in the construction sector. So if you guys remember, construction projects nearly stopped. Once this law came into effect, construction projects just stopped at all. But people were focused on the construction workers. What about the people in hospitality and in cleaning homes? Well, a lot of them had to stop too. So a lot, and then you also had the influx of a lot of rich moving from places like Massachusetts and New York and New Hampshire, right? And Connecticut, and they moved down because it's warmer here, because it's nicer. You had that nice year round warm weather, but because of the mix of DeSantis signing that into law, so they're so immigrants are fleeing Florida, and then you have an influx of more wealthy rich people. But now there are people who typically who clean houses aren't there anymore, and so guess what? They're not there anymore, and so this is why there's a shortage now. Could that slack be picking up, picked up by the rest of us? Yes. But the question is, do some of us want to pick up that slack by working and making that money? I don't know. Because the thing is, like, there's some of us who, some of us may have this, like, Ugh, I don't want to do that type of work type of mindset. But I'm gonna be honest with you, $150,000 a year. Now, when you get more people in the industry that are doing it, then that rate is actually gonna go down because now that the supply is, uh, the supply increases, that means the demand is gonna go down, which means that they're not gonna want to pay as much. But right now it's popping. I'm just saying. So let's continue. So this basically uh, is said it's difficult to know the number of immigrants who have left the state. Local communities and leaders base counts on what they hear by word of mouth. A neighbor who's left the house, a worker who never came back. So the Florida Policy Institute has stated that legislation could cost Florida's economy $12.6 billion a year. Six industries, including construction, agricultural and services, 
employ an estimated 391,000 undocumented workers, about 10% of workers in those sectors. So it says, even though the law hasn't taken effect yet, the Florida Immigration Coalition has already received complaints that some clinics have been asking patients about their immigration status, even though only hospitals that accept Medicaid are required to ask about immigration status and patients may decline to answer the question. So it talks about 40,000 farm, farm workers, many who are undocumented work every harvest season. So you got 40,000 farm workers that, you know, you got people who are leaving that, that sector. So this is why a lot of people, this is why there's a need for housekeepers, particularly. Um, and here's the underlying problem. And I always say this, but I think it bears repeating because some of you are new. Welcome to the channel. There are two sets of victims. There is the set of victims that have to flee their countries because of U.S. imperialism, colonialism, from the destabilization of their countries in places like Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Venezuela. The destabilization that happens and the war on drugs is also part of it forces them to flee their countries, their homes, the places where they grew up, to come to a country where over half the people don't want them here. And they come here to try to make a better life for themselves. Because of that destabilization that our government is doing, and then most of the time, they get exploited. They get paid starvation wages. And then what? If they try to band together to increase their wages, you know, or if they try to say no and demand for higher wages, guess what? There's somebody that's waiting at the border that will take their job. Or they're, they ultimately will risk being reported and deported back to the country that they fleed from. So their hands are tied. They have to eat. They need a place to live. But then what ends up happening is because they're being used as the scabs, essentially, for being exploited labor. And those of us who are citizens, especially those of us who are American descendants of slaves, that want to hold out and say, well, no, we're, we don't want that. We want our wages to be higher and we want more benefits as workers. Well, then they don't have to meet our demands because they already have workers to exploit. And that's how capitalism works because these corporations need workers to exploit, to pay lower wages so that they can make more profit. That's how it works. And so that's why I say there's always two victims. There's the undocumented, uh, the undocumented immigrants that are victims of US imperialism, of the stabilization, and then there's those of us who are workers in this country that are also victims because they're using them to exploit so that we do not have the increased livable wages and way of life that we are demanding from these corporations and business owners. Ultimately, the person who is the primary enemy 
is really the parasite class who loves to exploit the undocumented immigrants and loves to look at us and say, no, I can find somebody to pay way cheaper than your black ass. So that's how it is. This is why I always say solidarity with workers who are also immigrants is very important. And so when it comes to stories like this, even though it is positive for people who may be getting into the housekeeping sector, let's look at what the underlying reason for this is. The underlying reason for this is because capitalism eats itself eventually, because now these corporate parasites now have to pay through the nose just to keep their houses clean, because ultimately they don't, they want to do a band-aid fix to the immigration problem. A more permanent fix would be to make it so that the countries that these immigrants have to flee from, their homes, are no longer destabilized, that they don't have to flee anymore, that they can just come here maybe on a on a visit and maybe a visit work visa. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, be happy to go home and chill at their home because quiet as it's kept, you do not leave a home where you're happy at. You do not leave a home where you got it good. But because our country is destabilizing their country and making it hard for them to live, they have to come here. Now, do I want them to come here? Absolutely. But I don't want them to come here under duress. I want them to come here because they just want to experience the United States. They shouldn't have to come here under duress. They should come here because it's something that is joyful for them to just come and be here. And then if they want to go back home, it's easy for them to do so. Because humans have the right to movement in this world. But that's not what the corporate dictators want. They want that steady flow of exploitative workers to come here so that they can use them and then just toss them aside. So I think it behooves us to have as much solidarity with workers, especially ones who are undocumented because they're victims just like we are. They made the hard choice to have to travel here And they're not the ones that are taking our jobs. They're being used just like we are. I think it's time for us to band together and to stand up because these corporate leeches want us to keep our backs bent so they can stand on top of us every single time. But make no mistake, if you can milk as much money out of these corporate leeches as possible, you can go ahead and milk your money. Get yours. The party's not going to last long. Be real true. It's not. But get the milk while you can. Just saying. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.